Guys, there was a post on the page earlier in the week, I think it was Colin, um, was asking about uh, an alternative method of uh, getting life retention uh, in your sheath, alternative method of wet forming. And I've mentioned about hot waxing, it's something I've been playing around with lately anyway. So I said I'd, I'd, if I got the time I'd do a, a quick video on it tonight, so I'm going to do a bit of a down and dirty. I wouldn't say tutorial, but let's give you a look at, at my method of doing it. Um, if you haven't seen hot waxing, it's basically uh, a method they would have used back in the old days of taking melted wax and basically submerging the leather into it um, until all the wax is fully absorbed. There was no bubbles coming out of the leather. And what you get when it's dried off and it's cooled down is basically um, it's sort of like rock hard, almost like Kydex kind of feel to it. It turns, it does a, a real strange strange thing to lever, it basically just removes all the air, all the moisture from it and replaces it with wax which probably isn't a bad thing, especially in the winter months and um, it's probably the closest thing you're ever going to get to waterproof leather anyway so there are different methods of doing it, this is just the way that I found this easier for me I say it's going to be pretty down and dirty I can't really see what you can see in the camera so I'm going to try and keep you in focus um, but all I've got, all you're going to need, is, it is easier to do this if you're, you're making a sheath um, rather than having the sheath ready made and, and finished just because it, it'll keep things like when, you, when you're hot waxing you'll get a lot of wax and stuff into your, your stitch row and stuff like that and it can get, look a bit messy it can be a pig to get out your stitches but um, I have a sheath here that's kind of halfway done so I'm going to use the hot waxing not just as a conditioner or a waterproofer but also try and get a bit of a wet form around the knife as well one thing you're going to need to do before you start especially if it's a carbon steel knife is wrap your blade up, oil it, or wax it, wrap it real tight in cling film and some electrical tape doesn't hurt either if you got it, um, just to protect the blade because when you, even if you think your, your sheath's dry, any moisture that's in this when you apply heat to the outside it's going to steam on the inside and there's nothing's going to rush the blade quicker apart from maybe salt water but steam, steam will eat away at your blade so when I first did this I had a knife in the sheath, I was going away with a hot air gun uh, melting all the wax in, I took the knife out and it almost looked like um, it had come out of a heat treat oven, it was just all kind of wacky colours so make sure you're wrapping your, your blades up don't put too much tape or if you can get away with putting none around the bottom of the handle then yeah don't put too much on there because obviously if you're adding thickness to that and then forming a sheath around it when you take all that off and put your knife back into the sheath at the end of it it's going to be loose, it's not going to be a true wet form to the, the true shape of the handle so, um, I'm using these wax for mine, I've got it in a bit of a double burner, trying to keep it liquid, which isn't easy, it's a pretty cold one tonight. So, melted beeswax, obviously your sheath, your knife, some lint-free cloth is good, this is just an old t-shirt, cotton t-shirt, um, so you can wipe off the excess, and then a hot air gun or a hair dryer is really handy as well, because you can if you add the wax, as it's melted now, you add that to cold, cold surface of the leather, it's just going to solidify and it's not going to absorb. So you want to keep the sheath nice and warm if you can, to keep it, keep it absorbing. So it's going to be pretty loud, so I'm going to be using a hot air gun as I go. Um, but all I'm going to do is put the knife into the sheath, make sure it's seated where we want it. And I'm going to pause the camera and get all the stuff out. And um, I'll bring you back when we're getting ready to wax it. Back, about ready to get going. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is you want to try and do this on a surface you're not too precious about or something, it's easier to clean. This is a, like a granite food board or chopping board or something that I got from Wilco, like a tenner. Um, but you want something like this to smooth um, and that when you are got ex excess wax running off a sheath, you want something you can just scrape clean at the end of it, take a Stanley blade or a paint scraper and scrape the excess uh, wax off. Don't, don't go do it on your kitchen worktop or anything like that because you you miss this ain't gonna be very happy. But um again a hot air gun, hair dryer is probably a little bit better because it's not as not as fierce, but a hot air gun on a low setting, melted beeswax, lint free cloth, and uh, I'm gonna use a dauber, a wool dauber to apply the wax. So I'm not gonna talk too much because the hot air gun's gonna be going and it's pretty loud, but hopefully I'm gonna keep it in frame and you can kinda get the gist of what I'm doing. But basically I'm just gonna warm the surface of the leather up. Apply the wax, hit it with the hot air gun, just keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that until it stops uh, absorbing and it's got even colour. 
do it on both sides, front and back, get down the spine as well, trying to avoid the stitch row and any stitch and stuff on the belt loop. And then once it's at a point where it's even and it's equal, I'm going to start to use the bit of pressure then around the handle to kind of wet form and hopefully it's going to take its shape. So we'll crack on. Make sure when you're using a hot air gun or a hair dryer, you're not getting too close or sticking in one spot of the leather for too long because you'll cook the leather and it'll start cracking and uh, it'll dry out and it's kind of an irreparable mess to get into. So just warm the surface of the leather so the, the liquid wax will kind of start to soak in straight away and doesn't just solidify. I'm just going to keep on going, add the wax, hot air gun, wax, hot air gun, and then once it gets to the point where I think it's about there, take the cloth and just wipe off the excess, sip it, switch it over and we'll go to, to the back side. Hopefully you can kind of see what's going on, but the wax will solidify eventually when you put it on me. There's no getting around it, it's not going to stay liquid as cold as it is out here tonight. But this isn't finished yet, I'm going to do a couple more coats. But it's taken off the excess, so hopefully you can see the changing colour. I'm getting it in the stitch right here, but it doesn't really matter, I can scrape that out. I've not stitched all the way down yet anyway. But that's the first go around, I'm going to keep doing that on this side and I'll flip it over and we'll I might just leave the camera running and you can kind of see how long it takes. It doesn't take long to do. So I can kind of see now, it doesn't matter how much heat I put on it, it's not really absorbing any more wax. So I'm going to take off all the excess cloth. See what I mean about getting on the worktops. I'm trying to avoid getting it on the edge as well. Because um, obviously I want to finish that off with some dye and some sanding later on. Once your sheep's finished it doesn't really matter, you can just melt the wax off or wipe it off anyway. That's a pretty nice even colour on the front now, you can see all the stuff that's dripping off on the sides. Don't worry about that, we're going to get all that with the heat gun in a minute. So I'm just going to flip it over now, I'll get the spine and the sheath in the back, and uh, I'll bring you back when that's done. Okay, guys, so I've done the front and the back. Didn't do a very good job keeping it off the welt or the edges, but it's going to make my edge finishing a little bit more difficult, but we'll get around it. So basically what I'm going to do now, I wiped off as much of the excess as I can, any build up or anything you get at the bottom of your belt loops or behind your belt loops, just hit it with a hair dryer or the, the, hot air, hair, the hot air gun again and wipe it off while it's liquid. All I'm going to do now is hit it one more time with the, the heat and um, it's still going to be, you can see already, just from playing around with it, it's getting a bit of a bit of a shape to it around the bottom of the handle, so I'm just going to keep doing that until we get to a point we're happy with it and I'll bring you back. So I've just been pressing and squeezing and using the burnishing tool to kind of follow the contours of the handle around on the front and the back. You know, when it comes to wet form, I don't think it's really worth focusing on much more than where the blade meets the handle. That's generally the part where there's the most kind of shape that your lever's going to form around anyway. So on the front, I might try and shape to the whole handle, but definitely that's where, right around the finger guard, that's where most of the attention goes when you're wet forming, but you can kind of see it's taking a, a pretty good shape. I can't take this out until I finish stitching it because I want everything to stay in line. But 
if your sheath's finished, if you're doing this to a sheath you've already got, I mean that's the only thing you need to do now is just leave it sit, and the longer the better really. Leave it at least overnight if you can leave it a day even better. Um, and hopefully when it's cooled down completely and it's dried and all the wax is set, you should get a nice pop and a clip like you would with Kydex when you're taking a knife in and out. So there you go, it's a down and dirty hot waxing tutorial. Might not be the most traditional way, but it's a way that I've been playing around with you the last couple of weeks and definitely definitely does a job for me so if you've got any questions just drop them in the comments shoot me a pm we'll have a chat about it i hope i'll help somebody anyway i'll see you soon bye